Praise you, the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. When I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have in the being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. His breath goes forth, he returneth to his earth, that every very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth the sea and all therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executed judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners, the Lord opened the eyes of the blind. That's what I read for you, eight verses of the 146 psalm, and the Lord blessed the reader and the hearers of his word. Bless this anniversary, O oh God. 
Lord, you have grown. Oh, my God, all the way. 98 years. It's a up and down, but Lord, you brought. Had to cry sometimes, but Lord, you brought. Break up and make up, but God, you brought. Hallelujah, you brought us, Lord. You brought us, Lord. And Lord, we are grateful this morning. 98 long years, Lord. Serving you, O God. Love won't have gone on, O God. Thank you for them, O God. Hell is a way for us to go through. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask you to bless the sick this morning. Some in the hospital, nursing home. Private home, some at home sick. Strengthen them where they'll be, fill them up where they've been let down in the name of Jesus. Bless the Farid family this morning. Let them know that there is no sorrow on earth that heaven cannot hear. Let them know that weeping may do for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Bless our pastor this morning, O oh God. Bless First Lady, O oh God, in power this morning. To stand, Lord, sometimes you might have to stand alone, but be there for a family, in the name of Jesus. Bless the one that's going to bring the word this morning. Prop it up on every leaning side, oh God. Give him a word, Lord, that'll tingle our heart, that'll set us come running. I yield, I yield. I can't hold up no longer. What must I do to be safe? Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. And then, Lord, when I'm going to last mile of the way, can't go no more. Give us a home somewhere where we can serve you forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Jesus is the end. There's no light of mine. I'm going to let it
restroom and I have a testimony I'd like to share with us this morning. God has been good to us. And you're here this morning, let us know that God is good. He woke you up this morning. Hey. And we get a testimony from the audience. Tell of God, good to see you.
and then it's the Cheryl Shingle, and that, excuse me, <laughs> praise God, opening him on page four in your program. Count your blessings, and your hymnal will be on page 38.
41 to 47. Then they gladly received his word and were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfast in the apostles, doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of the bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness with, of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I have read Acts 2, 41-47. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to give the scripture to your people. Amen. Amen. Let us go before the throne. Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the 98 years that you kept us. Lord, it's been some ups and downs. It's been some hills and it's been some valleys. Many have gone home to be with you, but Lord, you kept them. Lord, lots have walked away, but you kept us. Some have turned their back, but Lord, you kept us. Lord, you've been faithful, and I glorify you and thank you for it, because only you can keep us. So Lord, we ask that you just continue to keep this house in Zion right now. Lord, be glorified in what you see in this house. Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for the man service that you've sent to lead us as we go on this journey. Lord, strengthen this family. Keep them safe. Lord, meet every need that's in this house right now today. Lord, speak to every heart that's in this house. Lord, let them know that it's not by their might or by their will, but by your will that they come here to worship you once again. So, Lord, we just glorify you. You are magnificent. You are holy. You are, you are set above every other name. And, Lord, we just glorify you in it. Now, Lord, we ask a special a blessing upon this pastor. Give him a word that will come and just enrich the hearts of your people. Lord, bless him. Give him such anointing that preaching will be easy and hearing him be easier. We ask all these blessings in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Shingles, for that scripture. Thank you, Reverend Mr. for that pastoral prayer. Now we will have announcements and official notes by Sister Melissa Driver and welcome to visitors by Sister Elizabeth Bolden. Church. To the pastor, Dr. Simmons, staff minister, Reverend Williams, our guest celebrant, Reverend Rakeem S. Thomas, pastor of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church here in the city of Newark, other ministers and evangelists in the pulpit, officers, members, and friends. Good morning and happy 98th church anniversary, Abyssinia. Now our church announcements. The names of our sick and shut ins that appear in our church bulletin are continuously asking the prayers of the pastor and the entire church. We are also asking prayers for the following persons and their families. Sister Karen Hammond, as she is in the hospital. Brother David Glenn, as he fell and is at home, recuperated. However, we are very happy to have any members who have been out ill, hospitalized, or have experienced a recent bereavement in their families here in service with us this morning. Even though we don't have your names, we are still continually keeping you in our prayers. Today, we are celebrating our church anniversary during the 7.30 and 10.30 a.m. services. For the 7.30 a.m. service, our guest celebrant, 
is the Reverend Rakeem S. Collins, pastor of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. And at 10.30 a.m., it will be the Reverend Norman Gamble, pastor of New Ebenezer Baptist Church from Florence, South Carolina. The, flor the Flower Circle will be having a meeting today immediately after both services in Room A. And at 6 p.m. today, there will be a Super Bowl party in the Thomas O'Neill Annex. On this coming Saturday at 8 a.m., the United Women of Zillian will have a meeting. Breakfast will be at 8 a.m. and the meeting will start at 9. Please join us as we prepare our 2015 calendar of events dedicated to stewardship, discipleship, fellowship, and worship. Breakfast will be served again immediately at 8 a.m. We look forward to sharing with you in all furtherance of God's kingdom. On Saturday, February 14th at 10 a.m., combined mission meeting. On Saturday, on Sunday, February 15th, Lock Carry at 3.30 p.m. annual Lock Carry Day, the layman's ministry will be in charge. The guest will be Emmanuel Institutional Baptist Church from Philadelphia, where the Reverend Joseph Daniel is the pastor. Women of Kirkwood Christ will also have a meeting. Please join the movement to end heart, I'm sorry, we'll also celebrate heart disease and stroke in both women and men. Go for red when we celebrated that day. We thank you for last Sunday's financial report, and that concludes these announcements. Amen? Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. First, I must thank God for allowing me to be here today. To Pastor Simmons, guest preacher of the hour, Pastor Thomas, all the clergy and everyone assembled here, I say good morning to you and happy anniversary. I would like to acknowledge all the visitors, so would you please stand and remain standing? Would you give your name and your church home, please?
Church. Happy anniversary, 98 years. The doors have been open, praise God. Thank him for all his blessings. I would like to thank Pastor Simmons and everyone who acknowledged my husband and I as the anniversary committee. I would like everyone that's on the committee, thank you, thank you, thank you. Some of you have, I have come to you last minute and asked for things to be done, and it has been done. And those of you for last year, I thank you, and I appreciate you helping us out. I thank Reverend Rahim S. Thomas for coming and celebrating again with us. Praise God. I thank you, visitors, friends, family, church members, for coming back out. I hope you have your assessment. Come on now. It's just a laugh. It's just a laugh. Um, thank you for coming out and celebrating your 98th church anniversary. And um, hope you come next year. And after service, 1030 service, we will have refreshments. It's not much, but it's a lot to us. And we'd be glad for you to participate and share it with us. God bless you. It's our prayer. I don't know why I am so nervous, but they say if you come on your own accord, you are not by God, but I would like to be by God and represent by God. Trustee, now we will have a word by uh, Trustee Robinson, Chairman of the Trustee Ministry, and after that, Pastor Simmons will come. Good morning. Good morning. Certainly we are grateful to God for this day. 98 years ago, a few brave soldiers decided that they wanted to honor God and praise Him by starting Abyssinian Baptist Church. At that time, it was not known as Abyssinia. But as time passed on, it did get to be at the senior. And in February, a few years later, they marched to this location. And of course, we're grateful to God. To Dr. Simmons and Reverend Thomas, we're very appreciative for Reverend Thomas and the Mount Pleasant Church to come over and service with us on this special day. And of course, Dr. Simmons has been leading us over the last 32 years, and we're grateful for his service. Amen. My message is in the book. We pray that we will continue to have a good time today. We're looking forward to this day. May God bless and keep each of you is our prayer. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. We bring you greetings from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to take this opportunity to welcome Pastor Thomas and the good people from the Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church coming to share with us as we celebrate our birthday. I want to thank him so much for accepting that invitation. Let me also congratulate Deacon and Deaconess Brown who has led us now for this the second year. Uh, and uh, we just thank God for their leadership. Um, downstairs, when you go downstairs for breakfast, you'll see some people set up at the table. They are from the Department of Health and Human Services. And they're here to sign up anybody who has not signed up for you know your health care. That there's a February deadline. I think it might be extended, but they're here to give their services free of charge to make sure that you have signed up. So if you're eligible, you know, stop by the table so that you don't have to worry about all those penalties that you will be charged if you, you know, uh, don't do what it is you're supposed to do. So uh, this is open to the community. So Mount Pleasant, if there are members from Mount Pleasant who need to stop by that table. Uh, please do so. Amen? Amen. We're looking forward to a glorious time today. 
as we celebrate our 98th birthday. And uh, as Brother Robinson said, if you look at the program, you'll see my message as well as we accept the challenge that the early church accepted. And their results was twofold. One was they found favor with the people, yes. and God added to the church daily, yes. such as should be saved. God bless you and God keep you. At this time, we're ready to renew our covenant vows. And if you will stand and turn to pages five and six, you will find a copy of our church covenant. And uh, if you are a visitor and a member of a church of this faith, you're welcome to renew your vows with us. If you are a visitor and not a member of a church of this faith, we will not be offended by your abstention. Amen? Amen. And so, to save time, we're going to read the bold print together. Amen? Amen. Let us read. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tapping, fight fighting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and the use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in speech and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. Humbly confessing our past sins, we pray for grace and strength to keep these our holy vows for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we will have introduction of the preacher by Minister Charles Tim. After that, we'll have music ministry by the ABC Mass Choir and words from the Lord by Reverend Raheem S. Thomas, pastor of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. Baptist Church. We had a powerful worship experience with him last year, and I'm looking forward to a powerful sermon from him this year. Let me just make one addition to that. After the introduction of the preacher, we will have a selection by Abyssinian, and then after that, my Pleasant Baptist Church Choir will do whatever their pastor has instructed them to do. Good morning. I am not going to insult your intelligence by reading Pastor Thomas's biology, biography, you can see that and read that for yourself. But I would like to highlight a few things. And the thing that jumped out at me very boldly is the first sentence. And that is, he is a man that has been radically transformed by God. He's armed with a special anointing. 
to meet people, and this is the part that I like, where they are, whether they are rich, poor, seasoned, educated, uneducated, businessmen, or ex -hunk. He's called to minister to people. He has a unique ability to cross generational gaps, and that is evidenced by the six generations of people that's, that are members of his church. Within three years, he has transformed the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. They're right now in the process of doing some renovations inside and out that should be completed in this year, 2015. Walking beside this man is his lovely wife, Joyce, and their two children, Savannah Rakeem Jr. In understanding that his life and his family is important, he is striving to be a man of uncompromising integrity. Pastor Thomas's favorite scripture is Psalms 1, the upright man. In Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. After the choir sings their songs, the next voice you will hear will be that of Reverend Joaquin Thomas, pastor of the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. Hear ye him.
O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Certainly, we give honor. We praise God for this day. We thank God certainly for, Amen. My, my neighbor, my friend, Amen. One that I've come to look up to, uh, Pastor Simmons, Amen. Can we put our hands together for the pastor of this great church? Every great church has a great pastor, and so we thank God for this great man of God, and we thank Him for allowing us to come once again to make our calling and election sure. Certainly we thank God for all these preachers that are here. Amen. And certainly we thank God. Amen. For Lady Simmons is in the house. The fragrance of the house. Can we give it up for Mrs. Simmons? Amen. 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 We thank God. Amen. And my wife is here. Leading Lady Jocelyn. Amen. Stand up so they can see. Amen. Amen. We thank God for her. We praise and thank God for her being with us, amen, she was with us last year, of course, we had the kids, amen, but we were kidless this weekend, praise the Lord, sister, praise the Lord, amen, amen. We thank and we praise God for her presence. Certainly, we thank God and praise God for these chairmen, these chairpersons of this great day, Deaconess and Deacon Brown, amen. Can we give it up for them, amen, for putting together a great service, amen, and certainly we thank and praise God to all the officers and leaders and the members of this great church, the Abyssinian Church, whom we love dearly, and we thank God for the, the partnership that we've developed down through the years, and certainly to Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant, if you're in the house, just wave your hand, amen, if you're in the house, praise God, we thank God for you, amen. Congratulations, Abyssinian, again, for 97 years, and we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for allowing us to share this momentous occasion with you on today. Amen. There is a word from the Lord as the focus is, amen, on being, amen, a purpose-driven church for the 21st century which impacts our community for Christ through fellowship. And there's one verse found tucked away in, I won't, well, yes, tucked away in chapter 1 of the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 1. And there's one verse I want to share with you and hope that it blesses you on this great occasion and encourage you to continue on in the work of the Lord. Acts chapter 1. When you get to Acts chapter 1, I want you to look, amen, with me at one verse, and that is the eighth verse, the eighth verse of Acts chapter 1. Amen, amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And when you got it, just let me know by saying, I got it. If you need me to wait, shout, wait. All right, I'm waiting, but not too much longer. We're on a time restraint here. I'm trying to cut, cut cross. Amen. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. On this 90th church anniversary, I want to preach from this thought. Keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. Just tell somebody, just tell somebody around you, keep up the good work. The text, my brothers and sisters, presented to us flows from the lips of our risen Christ. These words are words of preparation. Now, you must know that in a time God gives us a promise, it is a word that challenges us to get in preparation for what will come to pass. If God said it, you can count on it because God will do it. It is our duty as believers that when we receive divine words of preparation, we must then develop a mindset and an attitude of expectation. If indeed you love God and you trust God and have faith in God, believe in God, if you are a friend of God, you got to take him at his word. You got to trust him and never doubt to stand. You got to stand on his promises. You got to believe in what God can do. 
But now, inasmuch as we have expectation from God, you must realize, I must realize, we must realize that God has expectations for you. As believers, you must understand today that we too have responsibilities. It's one thing to expect great things from God, but don't you think he should expect great things from us? When you look at the text real closely, Deacon Clark's so glad to see you, cuz, and there you'll find that the Lord is conveying to them to keep up the good work. He's talking here to a group of folk who have followed him, who have put their faith in him, who have decided to follow Jesus. Those who have seen his enemies crucify him, yet his father raised him up on the third day. They watched him do mighty things and they watched him operate in their midst. They watched him do what only God can do. And now he, he appears to the disciples 40 days after the resurrection. He shares what their responsibility is and, and that is to continue the work that had begun. He says to them, it's no time to stop the great work. Too much good has started. No time to drop the ball. But now it's time to continue the momentum. Take up the mantle and pick up the ball and run and ensure that the work be continued to go forward. He says basically, Brother Deacons, he says basically all in a nutshell, I have started a good work. And now it's your job to keep up the good work. Oh, I wish I had time to work it the way I wanted to. And we see here, three years, we watch the ministry of Jesus as recorded in the Gospels. Healing the sick, raising the dead, turning water into wine, feeding multitudes, preaching to the people. And now he's saying to them, as I have done going about doing good, I want you to go and do likewise. In fact, he says in John chapter 14, verse 12, that he that believed in him, the work he's done, they too will do. And I like this, Pastor Simmons. He says in that saying, in that passage, and greater works than these shall they do. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. He says, uh, basically, I expect greater things because you've got greater access. You've got greater ability. You have no limits whatsoever. And isn't it good to know that we have the opportunity to represent the Lord in a great and marvelous way? Not just at Abyssinia, not just at Mount Pleasant, not just in the Central Ward, not just in North, not just in New Jersey, but anywhere our witnesses take us. And that's what Jesus says here, the expectation he has concerning all of his believers. He says, uh, I want you, this is what Jesus is saying, y'all. He says to be, to go, and to be a witness for me. Starting in Jerusalem, that is in the home, and then go to Judea, that is beyond the home, and then go to Samaria, that's the folk you may not even like, and they may not even like you. Oh, bless the name of the Lord, and go to the uttermost parts of the earth. Everywhere you can possibly go, he says, I want you to be a witness for me. Pastor, what is a witness? A witness is somebody who has seen something or heard something and is willing to testify about what they seen or heard. I feel like preaching in here. A witness, I'm going to say it again. A witness is someone who has seen something or heard something and is willing to testify about what they see or heard. And I wonder if I have in this early morning service about 10 of y'all, in fact, I only need nine, I'll be the one, who have seen what God can do. You've heard about the power of the Lord, and you know what you've seen and you heard, and you've come to the conclusion that only God could do it. And you don't mind standing up this morning and taking your halo off your head and giving God some praise because of the Oh, I wish I had somebody in here that can testify that he showed me some things.
when you can't help but to tell of the goodness of the Lord. And you got something to tell about God. Why don't you tell your nigga, I got something to tell about God. Ah, you need to understand in this house today, it's enough for trash talking. We got too much trash talking going on. It's time to get rid of the trash talking. We got to leave that to somebody else, but we need some folk who will testify that God is a healer. We need some folk that will testify God is a way maker. We need some folk that will testify that God is awesome. We need to testify that God is amazing. Enough of talking about this and that, but I think that we'll be much better if we just shut up and start talking about God. We need some testimonies, y'all. We need some testimonies around here who will let the world know that if they had I need 
need you to talk about me. I'm going back to the Father and I need you to go and talk about me. I need you to be my mouthpiece. I need you to be my instrument to get the word out about how awesome I am. Tell somebody on your road, you don't have the right to remain silent. Oh, somebody missed it. You need to tell somebody else, you do not have the right to remain silent. Lord have mercy. Ah, yeah, yeah, because, because if you've been saved by the blood of Jesus, if you've been liberated by the Lord, you don't have the right to remain silent. But you need to open up your mouth and say, God has been good to me. I don't care how you reserve, how you think, how reserved you think you are. I'm asking you to open up your mouth and talk about the goodness of the Lord. And ye shall receive power. The Holy Ghost. Lord, I feel like preaching. This is all right. And you, Lord, have mercy, shall be my witness. He says, I want you to keep up the good work. And if you keep up the good work, I'll be with you. Lord, have mercy. But first of all, first of all, we need to understand here that he initiated the good work. For three years he did it, and now he's depending on his followers to keep the story going. So from generation to generation, everybody will talk about the goodness of the Lord. We need to raise up our children to be willing to talk about the goodness of the Lord. Now there's three things that I'm going to give you, and I'm going to get out of your way. The first, of, first of all, if you're going to keep up the good work, you must understand you keep up the good work because of your designation. Somebody shout designation. In this historical book called Acts, the, the first century church informs the 21st century church on how we can be a witness, how we can be pur purpose driven, how we can make an impact outside of the walls of this building. The name in verse 1, in the first verse of Acts 1, that name is Theopolis. Some scholars say that he's a well-to-do brother who gives to Luke, the author of the book of Acts, money to prosper and to promote the gospel and the historical narrative that we read today. Others say that Theophilus can't be one person because Luke would not write his gospel and historical narrative to only one person. But then they say Theophilus is referred to a group of folk who, who, who love God. And so that word, that, that name means lover of God. So they say that this book is written to all those that love God and seek him and follow him and live for him and love him and those, these lovers of God have been called to be a witness for the Lord. The reason why they are witnesses because they love the Lord and they cannot keep the testimony about the Lord to themselves. Because of their love for the Lord, it pumps them, it compels them, it drives them. It fuels them, it pushes them, it encourages them to talk about who God is and what the Lord has done. And I wonder today, do I have anybody in here that love God? Because folk who love the Lord don't care about who knows it or not. Let the wig fall off, let my head go sideways, let me wrinkle up my suit, but somebody needs to know that God loves God. What Theopolis means, he's lover of God, but it, 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 it doesn't catch you. If, if that don't catch you, if that don't catch you, if you look at verse 2 on your own time of chapter 1 in the book of Acts, it says that they have been chosen. Now, if you don't, if you didn't get lover of God, you can celebrate and witness because and, and, uh, uh, and witness because you have been chosen by God. Yeah, the reason why you ought to testify is because you have been chosen. Let me hang this on the clothesline of your mind and let the Holy Ghost blow on you. You can celebrate today because he chose you even when you weren't fit to be chosen. <sighs> that, that, that's real good news. 
you, you might be sitting up in here and still don't got yourself together. But he chose you before the foundation of the world. And that's why you, can, you, you can't shut me up because he looked beyond my faults. He chose me and he sanctified me and gave me a new lease on life and gave me a new life and I can't help it by, uh, my, for myself. I have been chosen and I thank God for my designation and nothing can separate me from the love of God. Not only do we keep up the good work because of our designation, but number two, we keep up the good work based off of our observation. Somebody shout observation. Look at verse Look at verse 3 of chapter 1. Jesus shows himself to the chosen one. He does, he does so by giving them infallible proofs that help them to understand who he was and what he was capable of doing. Infallible, 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 which means convincing proofs. Because, because you know some of us have to be convinced of everything. And Jesus knew he was dealing with church folk, so he proved to them. <laughs> Maybe not that happened, Sydney, I'm sorry. I'm, but, 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 but he proved to them that he was alive by showing up. That was the first century. Now let's fast forward to the 21st century. How many of you know that the Lord has proven himself to you? Has he shown you how often? Has he proven how powerful he is to you? That ought to make you want to lift up your hands in the sanctuary. That ought to make you want to lift up your voice and testify. Because he keeps on proving himself to me. So the question I have for you today is, are you really convinced? Are you convinced that he will take care of you? Are you convinced that he will make a way out of no way? Are you convinced that he is blessing your life? Are you convinced that he will deliver you? Are you convinced that he'll watch over you? Are you convinced that he'll keep your plan? Are you convinced that he'll put food on the table? Are you convinced that he'll open up a door? Are you convinced that he'll make a way out of no way? Are you convinced? I'm done. But I got one more for you. Number one, we keep up the good work because of our designation. Number two, because of our observation. And here's the final one. Three strikes and I'm out. We keep up the good work because of his impartation. I think I'll drink to that. Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. trained in seminary, although that's good. He says, but you shall receive the power after you receive the Holy Ghost, power after the Holy Ghost come upon you, not because you've been a teacher in the church, but you can be a witness because I'm going to give you some power that nobody can overthrow. <laughs> Somebody ought to just shout power, power. Power, power that nobody can conquer. He says, he says, I'm going to give you power, uh, the power of the Holy Ghost to be in your life. And I like that, y'all. I like that because the text teaches us that without the power of the Holy Ghost, I would fail in my attempt to be a witness for the Lord. The only way I can be a witness, if you can be a witness, is when it is you have the Holy Ghost. Why don't you look to somebody and just say, do you have the Holy Ghost? Because I, in our own ability, we cannot do what we've been assigned to do. Because we're too frail, we're too flawed, and we're too fickle. But when you got the power of the Holy Ghost, he will empower you to rise up and speak. Even when you want to sit down and shut your mouth. That's why I know how some of us got the Holy Ghost. Because even Days. Uh, we don't have a problem giving God praise uh, because something on the inside uh, keeps working on the outside. Uh, ah, because of the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, you will enable, it will enable you uh, to do some things you thought you could never do uh, because the Holy Ghost just don't make you shout. And I love to shout. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, but you need to understand that the Holy Ghost got more. 
than that for you. Uh, the Holy Ghost just don't make you shout. Uh, the Holy Ghost just don't make you speak in tongues. Uh, but the Holy Ghost will make you stand up uh, uh, with some backbone and help you speak up for the Lord. Uh, you are going to witness it again. Somebody ought to shout Holy Ghost again. Uh, uh, Holy Ghost is not reserved for a denomination. Uh, but the Bible says, the text says, and ye uh, shall receive power after the Holy Ghost. didn't say nothing about Church of God in Christ. And United Hope, the devil is a liar. Ah, uh, you can have the Holy Ghost and be Baptist too. Uh, oh, I wish I had some Baptist Holy Ghost filled people here. Ah, uh, you need the Holy Ghost. Uh, you the Holy Ghost. You need it on your job. Uh, you need it in your home. You need it everywhere you go. Uh, when you have been filled uh, with the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, He will control you. He'll contain you. Uh, he'll enable you to be a witness for the Lord. Uh, and is there anybody here uh, that can say, I got the Holy Ghost? Uh, I got the Holy Ghost. Uh, they say, don't fool me now. Do you got the Holy Ghost? Uh, I'm glad you got it. If you don't have it, you definitely show sure up need it. Have a got a witness here. While you're trying to get everything else, you need to understand that you need you need the Holy Ghost in your life. Have a got a witness in here. You need the Holy Ghost more than you need connections. You the Holy Ghost uh, more than you need popularity. Uh, you need the Holy Ghost uh, more than you need business cards. Uh, you need the Holy Ghost uh, more than you need money. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, you need uh, and I need uh, and we all need uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's why on this 97th uh, church anniversary uh, it was nothing but the Holy Ghost uh, that you from then uh, all the way to now. Uh, have a got a witness here. Churches are folding up uh, all over the world. Uh, churches are shutting down and people are losing their buildings. Uh, and you ought to come to church today uh, because God has sent some Holy Ghost filled people uh, to keep his church together. Uh, you ought to stand up and give God praise uh, for 97 years. Uh, as you sought to be a witness, God has kept you. Have a a witness here. It was no good of your own, but it was the Holy Ghost that led you. It was the Holy Ghost that that drives you. It was the Holy Ghost that kept you for 97 years through recessions, through depressions, but the Lord. Word. 
maybe, maybe some of y'all got to be somewhere at a certain time. If you do, just leave the offering with the ushers. Amen. This time I want to extend an invitation to discipleship. Maybe there's someone here today who has received power only because the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you declare that you're going to be a witness, not only in Jerusalem, but in Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. If you're here today, we can receive you as a candidate for baptism. We can receive you on your Christian experience. We can receive you by letter. And we can also, for 90 days, receive you on the watch care. And by the way, I'm opening the doors for both Abyssinia and Mount Pleasant. Just in case you want to join Mount Pleasant or Abyssinia, this is your opportunity. Because we can send you anywhere you want to go. But he said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice, open up and let me come in. I'll come in and sup with him, and he with me. While the choir is singing, the doors of the church are open.